Sorry about that. All right, it says that I'm recording. I'm going to say a little prayer that I am because it is almost midnight and I'm finally ready. And you guys, uh, I have COVID. It appears to have a very mild case, but I admittedly do not feel very good and would really like to get some rest. So I really pray I only have to do this once. I have had to record lectures twice in the past because for whatever reason, it just didn't um, record. And so, you know, then it was just a matter of just repeating myself. And so I'm just praying this doesn't happen this time just because the last time I wasn't sick, this time I am. Um, so just kind of like a brief little thing, a uh, little housekeeping. Um, sorry, you can't see my face. I really don't feel good and I don't feel like I look good enough to present myself. So you've just got the screen of my voice um, and I'm talking quiet because my entire family is asleep. It's just me that is up. And so I just don't want to wake anybody. I've got um, Benjamin is asleep like 20 feet from me in his room. So don't want him to wake up. Um, and then of uh, just in terms of like i expect to only have to follow the five-day quarantine protocol um and so that would mean that well you know you'll be asynchronizing this assignment or this lecture today and then you will um um see me back in person no problem on tuesday so just uh just be aware so today we're going to analyze the components of a literary review published in a scholarly journal and we're going to discuss how to do a literary review and their importance of them as well. Um, so this is lecture two of the of four of the beginning of the research process lecture series. So um, I first, <coughs> man, I haven't talked in a few hours and I feel it in my chest. It does not feel good. All right, here we go. Uh, so just again, a little bit more housekeeping. I totally forgot about this. Um, the college, the college is hosting the ambassador of Brazil on Wednesday, February 9th at 9 a.m in Howerton Hall. Um, I went and saw the ambassador to, oh, where was he to? I forget, there was another ambassador that came a couple of years ago and I was able to come and see him and that was fascinating. So I highly recommend, I will offer extra credit if you don't have a nine o'clock class on Wednesday, I will offer you extra credit to go and watch that. Um, I'll discuss that on Tuesday since we have time. But, uh, I maybe like as we get close to it, but we um, we'll, we'll we'll figure that out. I I unfortunately have a nine a.m. class, so I might take that class, but I probably won't. So we'll see. Anyway, if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend it. I'll offer some extra credit. All right. So um, what I want you to do is get out a piece of paper and tear it in half. Um, we're gonna do. We're actually gonna go back just a hair to our lecture on Tuesday in regards to coming up with a really good um, uh, question, you know, essay question, research question. Um, and so I want you to do this practice. So this will take about 15 minutes and you're gonna just pause in between each step. There's like four steps. Um, and this is part of what you're gonna to to turn in to get participation credit. Oh, so I should tell you, um, participation credit is gonna be, you're gonna be sending me all of your notes, and they're going to include, you must include um, all of these instances that I'll discuss throughout. So just this first one. Uh, oh, obviously it can't be a sheet of paper, now can it? Because um, you're going to have to do it digitally. So on a doc, open up a doc and ignore the tearing. On that, in that doc, um, take two to three minutes to make a list of any political science or international relations international relations words or terms that come to mind um and then uh, i'll play a song just write anything that comes to mind in those that thing so go ahead and hit pause on uh, this lecture for two to three minutes and come up with as many words as you can i'm looking for like 10 to 15 words um go ahead and pause and we're back all right so now step two take another two th two to three minutes to review your list Put an X by anything that is less attractive to you. In other words, those those topics that even though you did come up with it, you don't find it all that that interesting. Put a check mark by anything that might be particularly interesting to you, um, and then put a question mark by any term that is a proper noun that starts with a capital letter. Um, so uh, remember, the proper nouns are not good. Forgive me. I'm going to try to hold my yawns back. 
are not good for um, essay question, research questions. So go ahead and hit pause, take two to three minutes, go over these once again, ready, set, go. And we're back. All right, now step three, make a second pass through this list on, on a second page. So if you're on a doc, just kind of drop down a couple of um, lines. And by the way, now that you're potentially five to six minutes into this, I suppose if you were to hand write all of your notes, that would work too. I didn't think about that. And just you take a picture and you'll send it to me, but regardless. So make a second pass to the list, uh, second page. Oh my goodness. Write any pairs of check marked words or terms that seemed seem to fit together. So if you suspect they appear to have a relationship, say household wealth and wealth and educational outcomes, put an arrow between them, showing the direction of the suspected relationship. Don't worry about whether the relationship increases or decreases either one of those topics for now. In other words, you know, the idea that household wealth might increase educational outcomes or decrease, just know that, okay, there could be a connection. So try to avoid, avoid words marked with a question mark. Again, that will take five to six minutes. Hit pause, ready, set, go. And we're back. Uh, and four, return to your new list and consider the pairs that you have associated, those pairs that you have just drawn arrows to, or to, you know, <laughs> tied together can you formulate them into a research question any of them you know the objective is to come up with more than just one it's going to be coming up with a bunch of them play around with them reverse their order and so you know think about do educational outcomes um influence household wealth or or have or are they influenced by household wealth that kind of thing play around with them reverse any order in which the terms appear perhaps adding another term that you forgot to the initial brainstorm or by adding some more specific terms or ideas to them. Then try to write two to three potentially viable research questions. And that's what I want to see. So highlight those, whether you circle them if you're writing it notes down or, um, oh gosh, or um, you um, actually like highlight them with, um, you know, on your doc file, however you want to do it, just so I can see those questions. And then consider how, um, uh, how and where you might need to narrow them to make them a little bit more doable within a 20 to 25 page scope, or you might need to broaden them in terms uh, to think in terms of generalizable explanations. So again, let's take five to six minutes on this. Talk, uh, ready, set, go. Hit pause. And we're back. All right. So and those are the five to those are the questions that I want to see the the two to three from this. So that'll be part of your participation. Um, so if you don't send me notes, you know, some of these, then you don't get participation. You've got to be able to follow through and show that you paid attention or part, uh, participated throughout the entire lecture. All right, so now on to literature review. So why do we conduct a literature review? So let's, you know, contemplate one of the questions that you just wrote um, and, and kind of use that in the context. I obviously can't see what any of your questions are at this moment as I'm recording, um, but uh, I've got a couple of options here to just kind of use as examples, but try to place the questions you just wrote in the context of what I'm about to explain right here in regards to why do we conduct, conduct a literature review. So it is virtually impossible to write something new on, say, international terrorism or even the causes of terrorism in the Middle East. First, because so much of it has already been written. So it's at this point, you're, you're very likely not going to be breaking ground. It's not, it's not to say that it's not impossible, but subjects like that, even as fascinating as they might be to you, might not necessarily have the kind of uh, new ground that you would be looking for. However, you certainly will not be able to write anything new that has not been researched without first knowing a great deal about the subject. Um, so remember, when it comes to research questions, like I've said you know, multiple times in the past, you really want to lean on subjects that you are well informed in already. Um, so if you are not well informed in the causes of terrorism in the Middle East, don't don't ever talk about that question. Don't ever turn that into a, 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 a um, research question. Find something that you have interest in, A and B, that you've got some background knowledge on. And where you know, I've never heard the answer to this question. So good research involves reviewing previous work on the topic to motivate and sharpen a research question. So among the many reasons for doing so are um, seven. To see what has and has not been investigated, which is obviously very important. 
to develop because you know again you want the goal for research questions is to break new ground but sometimes we do um, and i'll get into this here in a few moments but sometimes we do research things that have already been previously researched and for good reason to develop general explanations for observed variations in a behavior or a phenomena to identify potential relationships between concepts and to identify researchable hypotheses to learn how others have defined or and measured key concepts um, and to verify to identify data sources that others uh, researchers have used to develop alternative research designs in other words you know some people have researched things for a particular angle and you're looking at it going i think this needs to be approached the same question but needs to be approached from a different angle and to discover how a research project is related to the work of others so let's take a deeper dive often someone with research experience will start out by expressing only a general interest in the topic so examples are all broadly you know again terrorism the effects of campaign advertising on public opinion um and i can tell you from experience the tap the um, effects of tone campaign tone of advertisement tone on public opinion and international relations for instance so like a person has a general interest in those topics which again that's the the goal but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have a specific research question yet to be formulated so a review of previous research even before that subject has been the question has been asked can help the researcher that is you sharpen a topic by identifying research questions that other people have asked and then filling in the gaps you're know, looking for those areas that um, have not been hit on by the um, questions that you are seeing so alternative how do you do this by the way by doing a literature review so alternatively you may start with an overly specific research question such as do married people in other words okay so real quick i just need to what i mean by this is maybe you don't just have a broad topic maybe you actually do have a question so in this case you're just talking about like i have an interest in terrorism so i want to study terrorism okay that's a good start but maybe you have a question in mind and so in this case the example is do married people have different views on abortion policy than those who are single now that's an incredibly broad question it's going to be narrowed and i've got you know how it can be narrowed down here but the point though is is that maybe that you know that funneling of information in your mind has already begun uh, and so you're not looking at something from like oh let me research married people maybe you really do have an interest in abortion policy and so now you want to look at how people have different um, um really statuses of relationships as opposed um, approach and um, view abortion policy so reading the literature previously written on similar subjects related to public opinion abortion likely will reveal that your specific research question is one of many aimed at answering a more general research question which is a little bit better of, of a research empirical question and that is what are the characteristics or attributes of people who oppose abortion and do they differ from those of supporters so again you're now not just looking at married people um, think again of the idea of can a question get you to 20 25 pages looking at just married people their their views um you know to abortion policy might not get you there but asking them over broad questions still on the same subject you're still going to talk about married people but you're also going to focus on different again different viewpoints uh, at different relationship statuses then with a the question of what are the characteristics or attributes of people who oppose abortion and do they differ from those of supporters that is going to be a 20 to 25 page paper and by the way too you could have hypothetically flipped this if whatever reason you wanted to you could say what are the characteristics attributes of people who uh support abortion and do they differ um from those who oppose abortion so i mean like you you could have worded that either way so this this the second research question constitutes a topic whereas the former is likely to be far too narrow to sustain a research paper so um again since i'm sick we can't talk to our neighbors but you're gonna have to fill this in so let's say you want to highlight this discuss excuse me why is the second question better a better research question than the first so just give me a two sentence explanation in your opinion why the second question is better um go ahead and write it down ready sit, and then hit pause ready set go and we're back okay so 
However, after reading the published work in an area and could be getting through terrorism, could be abortion policy, you may decide that previous reports do not adequately answer the question that you are seeking an answer to. Thus, that is then when you may design a research project to answer an old question now in a new way. So, and again, that's why I said before, like sometimes you do ask questions that haven't asked before, but you're looking at them from a new lens, you're looking at them from a new perspective, you're looking, you're attacking them from a different direction, that kind of thing. Helps to verify the information that's already been previously um, researched by, by scholars in the past. So an investigation may replicate a study to confirm or challenge a hypothesis or to expand our understanding of said concept. So again, replication is one of the cornerstones of scientific work. It verifies that what has been found previously is accurate and true. Thus, by testing the same hypotheses in different ways or confirming the results from previous research, using the same data and methods, we increase our confidence in the results. And that further allows people to now cite extra additional work. It allows them to cite um, or cite that, that work, excuse me, because it has been verified by you potentially, but it also allows society, you know, this information is public knowledge. We do research in social sciences. We do research to not for ourselves. We do it for society. We want to um, educate society um, through our work and through our research. And so therefore, um, by increasing the confidence in results, we give society a stronger argument for or against certain things. And it could be international, it could be domestic, you know, internationalism, how to approach terrorism, domesticism, abortion policy. And thus replication can therefore help build consensus or identify topics that require further work that, hey, you might want to dive into. <coughs> Ugh, sorry. At other times, research may begin with a hypothesis or with a desire to develop an explanation for a relationship that has already been observed. Thus, the, the research only shows the relationship. The research doesn't explain the relationship, the why of the relationship, and the why of history in particular is, to me, the most fascinating. Um, as a history and government professor and, and <laughs> absorber of history and government, I suppose, I, mean, I just I, I live and breathe the stuff even outside of school. Um, I have long said, and I have also taught future teachers too. I teach a class here on campus that is for future high school history teachers. Actually, it's not just high school. Uh, it's, excuse me, it's not just history. It's all social science teachers. So that includes government and, and econ and US history, and world history, and so on and so forth. But my point though is, is that the most interesting part about history and sociology and government and so forth is not the what, it is the why. It is one thing to discuss and teach, you know, the United States declared independence in 1776, and then third grade, second grade, it's like, okay, that's probably good information for second, third grade to know it's basic civics. But by the time you get to junior high, high school, college, the, that date, it should become as irrelevant as, you know, as, as anything could become. Um, it really has to all, it really all depends on the why. And thus, you know, as we research, our research may begin with a hypothesis or with a desire to develop an explanation for a relationship that has already been observed, we could, say, approach the American Revolution um, through a new lens and begin to ask that question why um, in a different way than it has been before. Or, you know, often the why is very well known, but interpret the why in new ways. So in this, it, it, it hypothetically should come from new research, new information, primary sources potentially, or new secondary sources in terms of psychological understanding, new interpretations of government, what have you. So in this case, a literature review, by doing this ahead of time, may reveal reports of similar observations made by others and may also help you develop general explanations for the relationship by identifying between states or what have you, by identifying theories that explain the phenomena of interest. Finally, your research will be more valuable if you can provide a general explanation of the observed or hypothesized relationship rather than simply a report of the empirical verification thereof. So again, very important. It's more of it's not just the what, and that is the relationship between two things. It is the why. Why does the relationship exist? Why does it relate? Why does that relationship exist in the state that it does? So on and so forth. The state as in the nature of it. All right, so now the importance of a good lit review. 
So a lit review may consist of simply a summary of key sources. Um, social sciences usually require predetermined organizational pattern, and I'm going to get into what I, um, you know, I'm going to use for the purposes of our, our our class. It combines both summary and synthesis, often within specific conceptual categories. So. A summary is a recap of the important information of the source. So it's, it's as basic as it gets, whereas the synthesis is a reorganization or reshuffling of that information in a way that informs how you're planning to investigate the research problem. So it really does matter the order in which you present your lit review and the literature that you have dove into because it shows the, um, what you um, deem to be most important and then you know, in the, in the direction that you're, you're inkling. So the analytical features of a lit review might, A, give a new interpretation of old material, combine new and, or combine new with old interpretations, um, trace the intellectual progression of the field, including major debates. That could be very interesting. I mean, again, let's just look at the why of anything. People are gonna debate as to why something is and so you might trace that intellectual progression which this is basic historiography um, if you have ever studied history you do look back and go okay how have historians in the past approached things and and, and um how have they um uh, interpreted things and how has that interpretation changed and sometimes interpretations will lean in one direction and then over time it'll lean another and then over time it'll lean back in that first direction it's it can be very fluid which can thus be very important to your research because you might only know of one initial you know interpretation and so you think oh i would like to approach it from a different interpretive little direction but then you find through your lit review which again can be basic historiography and you realize oh historians used to think that way now they've switched back which can then change your question again and it could just be a matter of you know i would like to defend one or i would like to argue against another kind of thing three depending on the situation evaluate the sources and advise the reader on the most pertinent or relevant research this is definitely going to be non-systematic and usually in the conclusion of the lit review, identify where gaps exist in how a problem has been researched to date, which presumably then you're going to want to fill, or you're going to offer that that information cannot be filled because basically because the information that would fill those holes does not exist for some reason. So the purpose of a lit review further is to place each work in the context of its contribution to understanding the research problem being studied. Um, how important they were that is and that's going to be depending on the on your you know research that's going to be very important describe the relationship of each work to the others under consideration identify new ways to interpret prior research reveal any gaps that exist in the literature once again and resolve conflicts amongst seemingly contradictory previous studies which once again can be if you're diving into a subject that you find very interesting you find in the, in the lit review that there are two competing theories or or two competing um interpretations of something you might want to resolve that conflict and maybe that becomes your your review question you know why do scholars why do some scholars say that the united states you know american excuse me i'm trying to think of this on the fly you know, why do some scholars think that the American Revolution was good for democracy and something was bad? Well, just make that up right there. Um, I don't know if that really exists, but regardless, um, that maybe could somehow become your your research question. But that would be fascinating and, and certainly would be hopefully of interest to you because you're thinking, wow, this might be something that needs to be resolved and I can be the one that can do it. But most importantly, the purpose of a good of a lit review is to identify areas of prior scholarship to prevent duplication of your effort because once again while you might want to verify research the last thing you want to do is just do something that has already been done without any knowledge of it and then realize oh i've you know I've, all i'm doing is just duplicating replicating for the sake of duplicating replicating and providing nothing to, new to the to the field um they are a way to point the way for you in fulfilling a need for additional research uh, because again a good lit review will show you where the gaps are and that could be a great place for you to research 
and locate your own research in the context of existing literature, which is obviously very important. Um, and that is in regards to um, the placement of your research in that field, as in, are you at answering a question that is of utmost importance to the understanding of, of that you know area that you're just, that you're researching, or is it low on a totem pole? But you just you had this kind of fun little angle that you wanted to hit, so that's a big deal, and it can be very big for you if you do come up with a question that becomes paramount in the argument. Um, and study of whatever field it is that you are writing a research question on. All right, so the types of lit review. So in terms of the development of the lit review, there are four stages. One is the problem formulation, which topic or field is being examined, what are its component issues? Again, this can start out very, very broad. You can do the lit review prior to actually having your research question um, formalized. Two is literature search finding materials relevant to the subject, subject being explored, that can take some time. Um, you're gonna have to read a lot and you're gonna have to throw out a lot of your reading because it's just not gonna fit and that's totally normal. But, you know, I've mentioned the funnel metaphor today, uh, but in the past, I've also kind of mentioned the, the solidifying of your structure of research. In essence, your, your structure is gonna be kind of made of straw initially that the wind can blow down. But as you, as you, um, narrow in on the right amount of liter literature on your subject, the, light of, the right amount of, uh, the right kind, I suppose, of, of references and sources and so forth, that really solidifies your house and all of a sudden it converts to brick. So it is okay to spend some time and, um, you know, missing some shots, if you will, in regards to looking for the appropriate literature, you're going to have to sift. I mean, it's just part of the, the process and that's all right. Um, then comes data evaluation, which is determining which literature makes a significant contribution to the um, understanding of the topic, and thus can either help you with your work or, you know, by providing you with information, or it can guide you away from um, work or a direction that you might have headed in, headed into otherwise. And then finally, analysis and interpretation, discussing the findings and conclusions of pertinent literature. Um, so it is important to think of knowledge in a given field as consisting of three layers. So first, the primary studies that researchers conduct and publish, that's generally what you'll see. Like when you go to the GC library, you research something, that's what you're going to find, is that those primary studies that, are, that have been published. Second are the reviews of those studies that summarize and offer new interpretations built on and often extending beyond the primary studies. And this, this can be a lot of fun. It can be right where you want to be. And third is the perceptions, conclusions, opinion, interpretations that are shared informally that become part of the lore of the field. So those are not published, but the information once um, once kind of circulated within the field can become part of the study. So in composing a lit review, it is important to note, and, and by the way, that, that information is stuff that you might know depending on the field that you're researching. You might have information where you're like, oh, this is totally like I've always known this, but then you start to go through the research, you find that it's never been published. Um, and so that's that's still a layer of it, but you, you have to verify that you're ever going to cite that kind of um, information. But it um, is not um, necessarily um, scholarly. So it component, and thus you can't add it to a literature review. And therefore, you can't cite it. We can't source it as part of the literature review. So in composing the lit review, it's important to note that it is often this third layer of knowledge that is cited as true, even though it often has only a loose relationship with primary and secondary lit review studies. Given this, while literature reviews are designed to provide an overview and synthesis of pertinent sources you've explored, there are a number of approaches you can adopt depending on the type, the type of analysis underpinning your study. So. That, that, that last sentence is a lot there, and let me show you why. Boom. So there are six primary different kinds of lit reviews. I'm not reading every word, y'all. Um, argumentative, integrative, historical, methodo method methodological, excuse me, systematic, and theoretical. So what I want here is you to come up with a very brief, one sentence summary of each explaining what all six of these mean. That'll be, that, this is supposed to be a what say you, sorry. 
Um, so what say you come up with one sentence summaries of all six of these. So you'll give me just six sentences. Um, go ahead and pause. Ready, set, go. And we're back. And remember, this will be part of your attendance. So now writing your lit review. So once you've settled on how to organize your lit review, you're ready to write each section. When writing a review, keep in mind these issues. Again, I'm not reading every word, but don't worry, you also don't have to summarize these. Use evidence, obviously. So a lit review section is in a sense, just like any other academic research paper. So you're gonna have to use evidence and that does include citations. Be selective, only select the most important points in each source to highlight in a review. Um, so, I mean, that's basically, it's just kind of like, what is the thesis of that book or research paper that you are adding to review? Use quotes sparingly. Some short quotes are okay if you wanna emphasize a point, but it otherwise should be very easily or very entirely paraphrased. Summarize and synthesize. So remember to do both of your, to, the, to your sources within each thematic paragraph as well as through the review. Keep your own voice. This is an instance in which you can use first person pronouns. So while the lit review presents others ideas, your voice should remain front and center. And then finally, use caution when paraphrasing. When paraphrasing a source that is not your own, be sure to represent the author's information or opinions accurately and yet still in your own words. So even when paraphrasing the author's work, you still must provide a citation to that work. But that is, we know that from being college students. So like any other academic text, text your lit review should have an intro, a main body, and a conclusion. What you, include, what you include in each depends on the objective of your lit review. So how will it look? An introduction should clearly establish the focus and purpose of the lit review. So give some background on the topic and its importance, the topic it is that you're researching. So by this point, once you've, um, so when you begin a lit review, potentially before you have a question, you don't write your lit review until you already have your question and potentially and truthfully, not until after your paper itself is done. So that's then that's kind of like the cherry on top. It's it's the cap on the whole bottom. So again, give some background on the topic and its importance. Discuss the scope of your lit review. So for example, the time period of your sources and state your objective. Um, what new insight will you draw from the literature? Then the body is depending on the length of your lit review, you might want to divide the body into subsections. So you can also use subheadings. So lit reviews can be a few pages, you know, just know that it's not like they're, they're traditionally like, you know, a couple of paragraphs, they, they can be five, 10, 15, 20 pages. It depends on, you know, obviously how much you're referencing and whether you've written a book or something, but regardless. So as you write, you can follow these four easy steps. Again, summarize and synthesize, give an overview, and this is part of the body. And uh, analyze and interpret. Don't just paraphrase other researchers at your own interpretations where possible. Critically evaluate. Mention the strengths and weaknesses of your sources. And then write in well-structured paragraphs. So use transition words, and topic sentences to draw connections, comparisons, contracts. This is not one giant paragraph. Again, I mean, it might be five pages. And therefore, if it's five pages, you're gonna have multiple points that you're gonna to wanna to make. And those each must be designated by paragraphs. And then finally, your conclusion. In the conclusion, you should summarize the key findings you have taken from the lit and emphasize their significance. You can discuss the overall implications of the literature or even make suggestions for future research based on the gaps that you've identified, which would be important to scholars who are reading your work because they might find the gaps that you have illustrated that they haven't seen. And that might be a research question for them. Well, it could also be research questions for you in the future. So when I upload this, you're gonna have access to these. These are five examples of, of lit re reviews um, that I want you to just kind of browse over. But what say you? So using the GC library, throw, locate three articles on any subject, particular subject, anything that you want. I mean, make it terrorism, make it government, make it policy, I don't care. Whatever is interesting to you. In fact, I would. what I would say is actually, I didn't think about this until, until this very moment, reference back to one of those questions that you wrote in the very beginning. 
and just pick one of them, locate three articles on a particular subject, read them enough to get an understanding. I'm not telling you to read if they're 50 pages to read all 50 pages, but read them enough to get an understanding of what the main idea and arguments are in those articles based on your subject. Using this following template, create a lit review on those on that subject, not plural, it's that individual. Oh, fudge, I forgot to upload the, I forgot to add that slide, but basically it is intro body conclusion. This is it, it's do an intro, you're, you're gonna synthesize the information, you're gonna be using, uh, let's develop it, hold on, I wanted to illustrate something, oh, I guess it was back here, sorry. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not exactly sure I'm, what I was looking for at the moment, though. But regardless, it is, in, in, you know, make sure that you include an introduction, a body, and a conclusion, synthesizing all three. Oh, it's right there. That's what I was looking for, for the body paragraphs, those those four. So summarize, and synthesize, analyze, and interpret, critically evaluate, write, and well-structured paragraphs. Now, for those three articles, again, this is the final what's at you. And I, um, so this is part of your participation. If you don't do this, you don't get participation. Um, but for those three articles, I expect your lit review to be 150 to 200, 100 words. So don't, I don't want three pages. I just want you to kind of get that practice in. You're, you're looking at three articles on any subject you want. I recommend picking one of the questions that you, you know, you came up with at the beginning and then coming up with just like a 150 word, 200 word thing. So again, it's an essay text. Just use my, my terminology, it's an essay text response. All right, so you must do all of the what's you use. You must show me all of that stuff in order to get participation. If you don't show me everything, you do not get full participation. So just know that. So, um, and, you know, please know that I'm, I'm bloody sick right now. And so, you know, don't try to cheat me because I'm trying to help you guys out. So just a heads up, I had forgot to talk about it on Tuesday, but our second assignment, um, copy and paste the whole document to the Word, the whole assignment to a word doc and complete parts one and two. So part one, address the following question as completely and accurately as possible. Essay text, 150 200 words. Describe the purpose of a literature review. How can literature reviews be organized, be specific? Guess what? You should be able to do that right now. And then part two, read the 2003 publication, which is on loud cloud right now. I'm like 99% positive. The effect of negative campaign advertising on vote choice. So I'm like 100% positive. It's all loud cloud, right? Or Halo. I mean. um, using King and McConnell, address the following questions. Um, so King and McConnell, the authors. So address the following questions. Four questions. What is the topic of the article? What is or are the central research questions? In a paragraph or two, describe what the previously published research has to say about King and McConnell's research questions. In other words, on what on what research is the work of King and McConnell building? Cite uh, the specific articles King and McConnell reference. What is King and McConnell's contribution to the literature? Is it theoretical, meth methodological, methodological? What are the problems or shortcomings the authors identify with the existing research about the topic under investigation? And how do King and McConnell organize their literature review? Is it topic oriented, methods oriented, or is it is the organization effective and explained? So you have to be sure to be able to use three to five relevant scholarly sources in support of your content. It's traditional. Um, again, that's the assignment that'll be due next Monday. So we've got plenty of time. So once you finish this, what's a you right here? You are all done. Make sure that you have all of these what's a you. So it's one and this uh, two right here. This is a what's a you. Um, three and then four. This was the first what's a you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go to sleep. I love you all. Have a great weekend. Be safe, be healthy. And I will see you on Tuesday if all goes well. But that is the plan. See you on Tuesday. Oh, uh, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, email me your notes from, from this and the what's use. Email all that to me. Um, if you did happen to handwrite, just send me a picture of it. And that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, a doc is a doc works or even if you just copy and paste it into an email that also works so i apologize for not saying it earlier i didn't think of that until now i love y'all have a great weekend be healthy be safe see you on tuesday